Hello and welcome. I'm Elsa Gillis. The city of Charlotte is growing by the minute, meaning you can discover something new each and every day. Here on Your 704, we do the discovering for you, reporting back with information on some of the city's most popular spots and hidden gems. A cult restaurant favorite from the North Carolina mountains has made its way south. We go behind kitchen doors to meet the chef who's changing Charlotte's palate one dish at a time. Plus, it's the ultimate test of strength, endurance, and agility, and it's completely indoors. Can you make it all the way to the top? That's where we'll take you in a few moments. This is your 704. Climbing a rock wall indoors shouldn't be too difficult, right? At Inner Peaks Climbing Gym in Charlotte's South End, I found it to be challenging, a little intimidating, but absolutely exhilarating and rewarding. And with a little help, I made it to the top. Take a look. A lot of people have never heard of indoor rock climbing. They just think of climbing like Mount Everest. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that they think of, you know? But, but then they come in and they actually see what it is and they're intrigued by it. It's hard not to be stepping into the massive cave-like indoor climbing gym along South Tryon Street. Take. <laughs> Cedric Colby is the facilities director for Inner Peaks, which has its newer South End location and one in Matthews that just celebrated its 20th anniversary. It's a full body workout first and foremost, but you're playing, but you're working out, but you're playing, right? And so That's they the don't, best. yeah, they don't realize that they are getting this incredible workout and then they leave and they're wrecked and they just feel so good about themselves and it, and it empowers you and it makes you feel like you can do hard things. And if you haven't tried it out, don't be shy. This is for absolutely everyone. Beginners to elite climbers. So I took his word for it, put on a harness, and he guided me up. Build up those feet. Straighten out those arms if you can. You got it, you got it. Do you see this hold here? So you can grab this one and then come up and grab that one. Oh my God. And now put your foot up. Boom, like that. <laughs> put your feet against the wall and walk down it. <laughs> Oh, put your landing gear down. <laughs> so you're not supposed to fall to the ground like I did, but if you do, there will be someone to pick you up. I'm like shaking. <laughs> That's really scary. Yeah. Okay. That's probably one of the more gratifying aspects of rock climbing is that it is so terrifying. And it's really just, it's an empowering sport. You get to the top of the wall, you have a goal, get to the top of the wall, you get to the top of the wall, and it's just like, yeah, I feel great for doing that. He was right, so I went up one more time. <laughs> I don't know if most of them. Great work. All right, I'm going to lower you down now. Walk your feet down the wall like you're rappelling. Two times was about all my body could take. It's hard, but it was gratifying. And it's truly for everyone and all abilities. He says he's worked with everyone from children with autism to those who struggle with weight, and it can be oh a game God. changer. That's really hard. It's just this mind blowing experience. They have both beginner and elite climbing employees to help people at every level. And it's not just about climbing. They do yoga classes, have a fitness facility, there are climbing teams. Heck, you can even have your birthday party there. The husband and wife team behind Peppervine have had a little practice creating a restaurant that somehow manages to give off an air of sophistication and comfort. It's a spot that seemed to open in South Park overnight, but we can assure you a lot of engineering and design went into both Peppervine's look and its menu. Looking at the restaurant, it feels like you're, you're in a very warm museum. Yes. One step inside Peppervine, you know you're somewhere special. From the ceiling, the bar, to the wood sculpture that wraps around diners, a lot of thought and love was put into one of Charlotte's hottest new restaurants. It's no surprise, coming from power couple Anita and Bill Green and their business partners. Anita's a former engineer turned general manager. Bill is the executive chef. I think it's a good marriage. Bill is very creative and um, I am very structured, so <laughs> I think together it, it works. We met and got married and um, stayed in Charlotte for a couple of years and we end up in the mountains. We really wanted to open a restaurant in Charlotte but at the time couldn't quite make it work. So we ended up in, we found a little coffee shop and we turned it into 
Artisanal. Their celebrated Banner Elk restaurant, Artisanal, isn't going anywhere, but Peppervine is their new baby. What was the vision? You know, when you think back a couple years mm -hmm. now, I mean, yes. what, what did you want to create? When I met with the architects about five years ago, I said, please just make it feel good. And of course, good food. Let's talk a little bit more about the food. Yes. How would you describe the menu? The menu is a progressive, uh, American small plates, but it's influences from all over the world because you know we're in America; it's a melting pot. So you, Bill's vision is to just use ingredients from everywhere and make it approachable for any guest to understand and appreciate. This is where the magic happens. Yes, this is where the magic happens. He gave us a list of mouth-watering items, from the king crab to butternut squash dish to the baked sunchoke. Oh, and the bread. Yes, everybody loves the yeast rolls so and the, all the breads to, to order. order. So you come in, it's you raw. Order the bread, it's baked at that time it comes yeah. out of the oven. That's awesome. So it does not sit around. And it's, it's, yes. It's really nice. Oh, yes. Another must at Peppervine, taking a step up to the second level. This is one of my favorite cool. places in the restaurant, is just to kind of come up here when the lights are a little bit down and just just have a drink and just chill until your table's ready. Yeah. So it's been kind of nice. Not a bad view. It's almost like it's coming home for us, really. So we'll still be in the mountains. We'll still have artisanal. Mm -hmm. um, we do a little traveling back and forth. Yeah. Um, come summertime, but um, and we love it up there too. But this, I think, this is home for us. On the walls at Peppervine is a rotating collection of art from the Shane Gallery. It's all for sale, and diners can go home with a piece. Now, before you head to Peppervine, you'll probably want to make a reservation. Tables fill up fast. Venture into Charlotte's Dilworth neighborhood and you'll likely hear chatter about a small wine spot with a secret garden in the back. That spot is Dilworth Tasting Room and it's run by a man who brings incredible expertise to wine in the most approachable way. So I sat down with him and asked the ever important question, how exactly do you drink a glass of wine? To me that's the most important thing. And I always say that in every empty wine bottle is a story because by the time you get to the bottom of the bottle, there's always going to be an interesting story. For Dilworth Tasting Room's Jaffer Kovic, you could say his story started back in college by chance. Uh, initially, I wanted to go for gaming, and that's what I was studying. Uh, and then a fraternity brother of mine said, hey, there's a class where you can get an easy A, and it's all women. I was like, oh, great. Oh, amazing. <laughs> cool. And uh, my initial attentions going in changed within the first two weeks. That intro to wines class turned into a lifetime love, intense further study, and a career in food and wine. Fast forward a few years to Charlotte, where Kovic was looking for a spot to open up shop. I got lost on the way to the airport. I, I went down Tremont Avenue and I saw this, this little red building. I'm like, my goodness, what is that? I asked my broker to send over the business plan to the owner, and we met, and from that point on, it was a great story. It's a story that's over two years in and going strong, no doubt because of an owner who seriously knows his wine. What is the proper way? Let's go over this. Or whatever you think. Okay. Like people are swishing and like, is that actually correct? Uh, How do you drink wine? I just put it in a glass and drink it. <laughs> we go with the more rounder, wider glass at the bottom. Uh, it adds more surface area to it. So when you're tasting, always give it a good spin smell. Some people will retro nasal smell through their nose and their mouth just, and then take a sip. And he says it's okay to switch between red and white. Yeah, that's the problem. A lot of people will think, oh, I have to, there's this whole mystique behind wine. Listen, it's, it's just wine, it's grapes. Just put it in a glass and drink it. His top advice, keep tasting different wines. Uh, so we try to keep it fresh and fun. I taste every single day. When we replace anything by the glass, we go through about 100 different wines for each selection. And no visit to Dilworth Tasting Room is complete without peeking at this gem of a patio. Uh, when I saw the building, I peeked over the fence. I'm like, oh my God, look at that. Why is that empty? Why is it not leased? <laughs> that is a beautiful space, yeah. but the combination yeah. that makes this really special. It's really nice when you come out here in the summertime or fall and spring and you don't feel like you're in Charlotte. It's like a secret garden. Yeah. Out of so. a fairy tale. 
Jaffer has wines you'll only find at Dilworth Tasting Room. He has some cool red and white burgundies. He loves wine from Hungary, and you'll likely find a Croatian wine, a nod to where his family is from. One thing you can count on, learning a lot about wine and always finding something new on the menu. A need for speed isn't just a saying. It's a way of life for some go-kart racers in Charlotte. We'll take you inside this racing facility to show you the unusual way they're attracting riders both young and old next. Welcome back to Your 704. I'm Elsa Gillis here at Queen City Grounds. Racing for some is an itch you can't scratch. The intensity of the sport mixed with speed and rivalry comes to a head inside Victory Lane Go Karting. We suited up, went inside, and found the sport to be addicting. All right, guys, let's go racing. Speed, the smell of exhaust, and the sounds of engines roaring. It's an atmosphere that some can find addicting here at Victory Lane Karting. The really cool thing about go-karting, it's driving. Everyone drives. All people are capable of doing it. Managing partner Fred Ogrim knows how go-karting can fuel one's desire to race. With two high-speed tracks stretching across this massive indoor go-kart facility, racers have their pick when it comes to choosing a high-velocity adventure. Real fast, lots of fun. A lot of fun. And at the North Charlotte facility, the racing isn't as easy as it looks. Go-karting is very difficult, believe it or not. Most people think it's very simple. These are racing go-karts. They're not slow. You're required to wear a helmet. Once racers hit the pedal, they're encouraged to discover what kind of driver they are. The blue track, with its slick surface, is meant for more technical drivers. The orange track, with its tricky combo of sharp turns and long straightaways, is designed for the riskier racer. And the gas-powered go-karts aren't slow. We're going to go however fast you can handle it. It's not the sudden twists on the tracks that will shock you about Victory Lane go-karting. It's their ability to transform themselves from an entertainment center to a place where you can do business. We have mostly corporate events during the week. Victory Lane karting also doubles as an event space designed for Charlotte corporations to use when looking to team build or train employees. It's also a space where the drinks flow in between races. We have a full restaurant, a full bar, and we have 20 beers on tap, so when you're done racing, you can sit down and have a beer and brag about how good you thought you were. So suit up, wind down, and get racing. Go-karting is so much fun that you, you do it the rest of your life. Well, I don't even own a car, so for me, yeah, it was an experience. <laughs> yeah. Victory Lane may welcome amateur racers, but in July, it'll play host to the Kart World Racing Championship. That means the best indoor kart racers in the world will gather right here in Charlotte to compete. Like cocktails or wine, a Charlotte brewery says it can get you to drink beer instead. The process they're putting into brewing to separate themselves from the competition. Charlotte's brewery scene is a competitive one with nearly 50 breweries in the Charlotte area alone. But a town brewing company, the staff says they're brewing beers with an edge. Our Brittany Waters put the taste to the test and this is what she found. So we're here at Town Brewing Company with Brian Quinn, head brewer. Yep. How does Town Brewing stand out from all of the Charlotte brewery roster? Trying to find how you can stand out in such a, a, a crowded market, a crowded field is, is, is challenging, but putting out really excellent, consistent quality beer, uh, both a mix of classic styles and um, some more adventurous experimental styles. Uh, but it's not just about the beer. We've got a, a full kitchen, which you don't see that at, at as many Charlotte breweries, so that's that's been great, and we've been able to do a lot with um, beer and food pairing and developing a food menu that kind of works great with our, with our beer lineup because there's so much about food that can elevate beer and vice versa. So that's been very exciting for me. We've got a pretty exceptional wine list, especially compared to you know, the typical brewery, red and white. We've got a couple of great local hard ciders on tap. We've got kombucha on tap from, from Lenny Boy here in Charlotte. Uh, and you know, we're doing some house-made sodas as well. We really want it to be a, a comfortable place where people can hang out for one beer, hang out for a few beers, hang out, grab a bite to eat, and, and really spend the day here. So that is our Raspberry Hibiscus Session Sour. Um, sours have been very popular lately. Uh, this, and I, I love them because I feel like they're bringing in a, a lot of new beer drinkers that you know 
aren't maybe necessarily traditional beer drinkers, but uh, cocktail drinkers, wine drinkers, they can get get behind that type of product. It kind of um, drinks almost in the same vein of a, you know one of the spiked uh, seltzers that are you know so popular right now. It's light, it's crisp, it's a little tart, it's refreshing, it's very fruit forward. And then right here I've got a just a real old school classic American pale ale. So okay. it's kind of <laughs> the opposite end of that spectrum probably. Our best sellers have been our Escape Plan IPA and our My Apologies, You're Welcome uh, Hazy IPA. I like the name uh, of that one. <laughs> people, you know, people, we're living in an IPA world. People love it. I, you know, I definitely want to make sure I have, you know, some, some IPAs for, for that crowd, but not just IPAs. Right. So like, like I said, really want a, a broad range of styles for everybody. I'm excited to see the back the brewery where the magic happens, so. Sounds good. Wow, so this is where the magic happens. This is where the magic happens. <laughs> Up front's where all the fun happens. Okay. So tell me, how does this all work? The process starts over here on the brew house uh, where we take the malt and we convert the starch that's on that malt into sugars, and that's kind of what we're ultimately after. Um, after we extract that, that sugar from the malt, we cool it down and we send it over into the fermenters here, and this is where we add the yeast. Yeast is very important for brewing because it's that yeast that converts that sugar into alcohol, CO2, uh, heat, and then all of the, a lot of the, the flavor and aroma compounds in beer. So yeast are by far the, the star of the show. From grain to glass, it takes probably about uh, two to three weeks to make a nail. Wow. Um, a little bit longer for a lager. So we've got our first lager in the tank right now. That'll take about six to eight weeks. Why did you choose this location. You know, Wesley Heights, Freemore West area has been just exploding in the last few years. It's amazing. I mean, the community's great. Um, just love seeing all the development going on over here. We really want to be a part of that. So that was one of the, the things that really led us to choosing not just this location, but this neighborhood in particular. Head to the Wesley Heights neighborhood in West Charlotte and you'll find Town Brewing Company. They're open every day of the week except for Tuesday. A quick drive northeast of Charlotte City Center will take you here, inside a neighborhood where beer, barbecue, and boundless art prevail. The top five things you should do in Plaza Midwood is next on your 704. Drive into Plaza Midwood and you'll think you're entering another one of Charlotte's historic residential neighborhoods. That is, until you reach the heart of it. Plaza Midwood is a melting pot of different tastes and character with its eclectic drinking scene and colorful shops. It's a neighborhood that has a voice, one we think you should hear. That's why we're outlining the top five things to do there. Take a look. If you missed it before, you won't now. Stash Pad Vintage just underwent a colorful transformation involving gallons of purple paint and shoppers have noticed. Number five on our list includes a trip to this vintage apparel and accessory store. What you may find inside is a surprise to us all, with classic vinyl records on display next to wigs, random art, and clothes. You'll likely walk out of Stash Pad Vintage with something you never dreamt of buying, and that's okay. Number four includes a stop for a meal at Zeta Jane's. Like Stash Pad, Zeta Jane's is noticeable, the lime green building right there on Central Avenue. Be warned, you'll likely see a line wrapped around the building during brunch. Zeta Jane's Bunny Rancheros meal draws large crowds in the mornings. The good news, there are outdoor games like shuffleboard outside the restaurant to entertain you while you wait. We couldn't mention a Charlotte neighborhood without highlighting another brewery. And in Plaza Midwood, Legion Brewing reigns supreme. Number three on our list, Legion has managed to take German beer and put a local spin on it. It's so good, beer lovers show up by the dozens to try it out. Everybody loves a beer with a unique name, and so does Legion. That's why we suggest you sip on the Supernova. Follow the smell of wood smoke barbecue and you'll stumble across a staple in the neighborhood, Midwood Smokehouse. Despite there being four other restaurants of its kind scattered throughout Charlotte, the Smokehouse location on Central Avenue has an ambiance of its own, making it number two on our list. In the last six months, Midwood Smokehouse's reputation has reached the ears of celebrities like Justin Timberlake and Bill Murray. They, along with hundreds of other locals, stopped in just to taste the meats cooked on Carolina Hickory Wood. It just was named as the third best barbecue in North Carolina by USA Today. In Plaza Midwood, a David and Goliath storyline plays out on Central Ave with the presence of the Thirsty Beaver. It's number one on our top things to do in Plaza Midwood list. 
The dive bar stands tall, despite its walls being surrounded by a massive apartment complex. The short backstory is that the owner of the bar has spent years refusing to sell the land to developers. For those who venture inside, you get what you'd expect. Domestic beers are sold in cans or bottles only, and cocktails served in plastic cups. The prices are cheap and the atmosphere is lively thanks to a jukebox. The Thirsty Beaver's unparalleled character makes it an icon here. Next time on Your 704, it's a safe haven for homeless animals and caffeine addicts. Charlotte's first cat cafe is open in Noda, and already its existence has saved the lives of countless cats in danger of being put to sleep. The stories that we hear about how they're affecting each other and how humans and cats just, you know, it, it, I, we call it magic. I think it's magical. <laughs> I stepped inside Mac Tabby Cafe to experience the magic its owner is talking about. That's next time on Your 704. For now, we're headed back out to talk to more of the city's entrepreneurs as they introduce us and you to some of Charlotte's most interesting spots. We'll see you next time. Until then, you can follow us as we work our way through Charlotte's neighborhoods on Instagram and Facebook. Just search for Your 704. Nice. And now you can touch the autoblade. Thank you. <laughs>